Yeah, that's right. Welcome in. Welcome back, folks, to a Notre Dame officially has a spring quarterback battle. Let's break it down. Addition to the always Irish show. As always, you can find a program on YouTube. Do it. Subscribe if you haven't yet. Appreciate it very much. Give the video a thumbs up notifications on that way you'll be alerted every time a new episode drops you don't want to miss it twitter search bar always irish rat always irish Inc. emails always irish handy at gmail.com audio only anywhere you want me you can get me call in line 312-988-15 tell johnny all you heard and seen fighting irish wire every day new stuff to read about notre dame football check it out so we're getting into the swing of spring, if you will. So I don't know if everybody's talked yet. Maybe I missed it. I didn't see Freeman give some big press conference, everybody breaking it down, but certain guys talked. And we found out that the biggest storyline that was going to be anyways this year is indeed going to be a big one. And, and there's a quarterback competition Hartman, the sixth-year guy. Buckner, the homegrown guy that's been through a lot. We all want to succeed. What's going to happen? What's going to happen? Let's talk about some of these dynamics now that, that we're into spring and it's being talked about by the coaches and the players themselves. Okay? So there's no doubt about it. The biggest storyline of this spring and summer 2023 is going to be the Notre Dame quarterback battle. This makes perfect and complete logical and practical sense to me for two main reasons. Number one, quarter, I say it all the time, quarterback is the most important individual position in all of sports that could dictate and change what's possible week to week, game to play, game to game, season to season, Series to series. So it's just as it should be. It's the most important individual position. It's a big deal. And number two, for Notre Dame specifically, quarterback's been a position, quite frankly, we have not been getting enough high-level production out of reliably for a long time now. So for those two reasons, it makes perfect sense why this is going to dominate the headlines, dominate the podcast world, YouTube, all of that. Let's get into some major discussion points in this regard on this matter. Number one, there is going to be a competition. That was a question after Hartman came here, but before this last week. Now, we could debate all day if this should be an open competition is it really one, but is it really being called one, but only as a talking point to keep everybody engaged? But behind the scenes, everybody knows what way they want it to go. I don't know. I don't know all those details. You know, the question of, and I understand why it's asked, why would Hartman come here with one more year left to go as a sixth year eligibility guy and then ride the bench? That makes no sense. I agree with that, but that doesn't mean he was guaranteed the job by Reese or anybody else. And we'll get to Reese. He's a part of this. So I, I just think that either way it goes, both guys are really confident and should be. Competition's healthy. Let's go ahead and see a high level battle from these guys. But I don't think this comes down to, oh, was Hartman promised behind the scenes? He's the guy. I think he's confident enough that he wasn't worried about who's behind him at Notre Dame and that he's going to win a competition if there is one. And, and for Buckner, the guy's finally thinking this is his chance. He's finally healthy and could go into a year in a clean slate. He's more highly motivated than ever to make some moves. Beautiful. This competition is healthy. Let's see a high-level battle from more than one guy here this spring battling. And what I like is they're battling, and they both kind of bring different things I like to the table. Hartman obviously has the body of work passing the ball that we've been in desperate need for. And Buckner, everybody's excited when you see him run around and make plays out of nothing. Can't wait to see that. But 
it's clear from these pressers it's going to be a competition. The new quarterback coach said Buckner's not going to come in here and lay down for anybody. So they're running a legitimate competition. I, this kind of leads me into number two. I think in a legitimate open position, uh, open position battle where both guys stay healthy, Hartman's going to win that battle. You could disagree, whatever. We're going to see how it goes. But if you made me put a $10,000 bet on one of these guys or the other, if they're both healthy, I'm doing it on Hartman. It just makes total sense. The reason the staff brought Hartman is in was to provide the consistency that they weren't able to get last year. And you don't know that you're going to get out of even a healthy Buckner because you haven't seen that all play out long enough to get a, a good idea. And that dynamic burned Notre Dame last year. Even if Buckner was healthy all last year, you didn't know what you were going to get. It wasn't something that could be relied upon. So that's an issue. That's why Hartman's here is to avoid that problem and not knowing what you're going to get or a catastrophic injury. And you don't have a guy you think has elite traits. So for those reasons, it's logical for me to think Hartman's going to win this battle. That leads me to my next question though. Does Buckner get packages just for him? More uh, run option packages Mix up the look. If that happens, how often does Buckner get out there in those packages? Is it only in mop-up duty? Or is it when you get in, in a certain part of the field, it makes sense to spread things out, show a different look, and put Buckner out there for a, a just to change things. Spread the defense out. Keep him honest against his legs. A balance of keeping the defense on their toes, but also that would be an effort to keep Buckner happy. We're no longer in a situation where if a guy doesn't win a starting job, he's either got to sit, bide his time, practice, wait for his opportunity, or leave and go sit out and wait all another year before that's over. That's over. So should that come into play of like trying to keep Buckner happy or how much, how many snap, snaps is it going to take to do that to keep him engaged? I don't know the answers to that, but it's very interesting to me. It's very intriguing how they're going to manage that. What happens with Buckner? Now, that leads me to my third point. It's very possible a Notre Dame quarterback leaves Notre Dame soon. This happens at every school all the time. I just think we're not used to having multiple high-level guys in the program that could honestly compete nationally and that we're excited to see play. Hartman, Buckner, and Jelly Minchie Carr is a very, very crowded room very soon. Welcome to the real world of having multiple quarterbacks that can play for you at a decent level. Or at least coming in with the talent to be able to. So it's possible somewhere in the near future, one, one or more of these quarterbacks goes somewhere else. The most interesting angle of that would be is, I'm just throwing this out there. I'm not saying it's going to happen. If Hartman wins a job in the spring and it's obvious and clear, and Buckner decides, I'm sick of sitting here with bad luck, bad injuries, sitting behind a grad guy. I need to go somewhere else, play right away. I'm sick of this. That changes your dynamic right away to next year. Keeping a Hartman alive and upright and in one piece becomes a, a much bigger priority at that point, doesn't it? Because you no longer have Buckner as that backup you'd feel pretty good about as a backup if you need it. So I don't know what's going to happen there in the short term or the long term, but I know all these quarterbacks are not sticking around. There's not enough spots and not enough snaps. So I don't know who's going where and when. But I'm telling you, that's coming. Welcome to the real world of having real quarterbacks competing. This is what it should look like. It's a healthier dynamic. Number four is the, the Hartman and Reese dynamic and then the Hartman and Parker dynamic. And it's like, 
I, it's a tough place for Hartman. When he was asked about his relationship with Tommy and all that, there's no doubt Tommy played an integral part of this guy being interested in coming to Notre Dame. This guy wanted to play under Reese's offense. Reese is no longer here. So that triggers a whole lot of adjustments and changes. It is what it is. That was Hartman's response when they asked, what do you feel about the dynamic Tommy leaving and all that? It is what it is, which is exactly right. And then Hartman explained, I totally understand why Tommy felt he had to go uh, embrace this opportunity. But yeah, it's kind of inconvenient for me. That's my main guy I built a relationship with and the guy I wanted to play under because I liked his offense. So awkward dynamic there. The biggest problem was already avoided, which was Hartman saying, when Tommy left, that's my guy. He's not here. I don't want to be here. And there were rumors that that some of that was being talked about. But the guys here, spring start, and so obviously it didn't go through or or there was no fire to that smoke in the room or whatever that he was kind of uncertain about what the future is going to look like here with Tommy gone. So that was the first big thing they did manage to avoid, that issue of him not wanting to be here if Tommy wasn't here. But now that we're in the moment in time we're in now, practically these guys got to get on the same page fast. Hartman and Parker, Hartman and the new O-line guy and Parker and the wide receivers and what they're doing at tight end. Like it all has to line up now and fast. There's a lot of work that has to be done. I mean, just practically to get all those guys and those moving parts all to line up on the, on the right side of this and all pulling from the same rope the same way with the same strength. There is a lot to get done this spring with all these moving parts that have to come into place. So there's just a lot there to examine and, and look at. And, you know, let me, let me put it to you this way. You could maybe argue with a lot of this stuff that, that it might be an advantage in some ways that Parker's from the inside as the tight end guy sliding over to offensive coordinator. If there, I understand the downside of that. If there's a plus side of it, maybe it's that that transition is easier for everybody because he was already in, knows the personnel, uh, whatever terminology he may keep or change or whatever. Maybe everybody has a head start on that process of adjustment because the guy was already on the inside. So maybe that's a plus to hiring an inside guy instead of going outside. Um, but there's a lot of work to be done there just to get on the same page. And then here's my concluding thought here. Having multiple quarterbacks we are excited about competing is major, major progress from Notre Dame. We have had years recently where there's a quarterback competition that doesn't mean it's one that excites anybody or was good enough nationally. A Buckner-Pine battle last year? No, no. That isn't even the real world of the kind of battle you want in your quarterback room. That, that was a frustrating battle because I, it wasn't a battle between two potential elites in my mind. I'll say it again. Even if Buckner stayed out the all last year, you had no idea what you were going to get. You were going to hope for ongoing incremental progress and using his legs and all that, but you didn't know what you were going to get. So not all quarterback battles are exciting. Last year's was not. This one is. This one is. The, the concept of Buckner being a number two is so appealing to me in this dynamic we're working in right now. That appeals to me a lot. So having multiple quarterbacks we're excited about in a battle is major, major progress. And rare it's rare for us to be in this position. So there's a lot that still has to come together. But if it's done right, this offense should be very exciting and offer and feature some things we have not been used to seeing lately. So I'm excited to see this. I think this kind of battle is healthy and good. And this kind of competition could get the most out of everybody involved.
directly or peripherally of these quarterbacks pushing the wide receivers and the tight ends and the backs and demanding good protection, all of that. Let's see it. This is going to be exciting, and it's Notre Dame turning the page to more of what a real-life, competitive, nationally quarterback room and dynamic should look like. Embrace it. It's going to be exciting, and the blue and gold game hopefully should be the culmination of a lot of this work. Stay tuned. It's going to be interesting.